Thank you all uh, for coming. I, uh, I, uh, I'm Rabble, um, and uh, I want to talk about uh, some of the work that we've been doing, and also uh, how to how to grow the the Nostra community and where I think we should be going. Um, I have great respect for everybody who was just on stage. I have some disagreements too. Uh, and I think that that's part of the point, is that there is many ways in which we can do things. And first, uh, uh, I am a little bit critical of some of the Bitcoiner community, uh, which is not to say that I don't want Nostr to use Lightning and to use Bitcoin and everything else. It's that I think that our, our future needs to, uh, people need to not be here for, for that. First off, as we know, uh, someone called it a, a, a bear moment or a winter in, in Nostra time. We've, uh, when we had Nostrica, we were facing a tremendous amount of growth. And uh, it was very hard to keep up with the growth. And over the last few months, our growth is, is stabilized. And we've, we've consolidated around a set of users, but we haven't grown in the same way. And I think that there's a, a reason we haven't grown the same way, and part of that is the maturity of the apps, part of it is the technology, part of it is the user experience, and part of it is that we have consolidated among one community of users, and we need to figure out how to support other communities' users. Um, what's also important to know is that the, the Nostra development hasn't itself stalled. Uh, in fact, there's a tremendous amount of interesting development going on, and it's super exciting. Um, to, you know, my talk sort of eight months ago in, in, in Costa Rica was on the history of this and the realizing that uh, we have faced a pendulum swinging between centralized and decentralized solutions for social software uh, and applications since the 1960s. And so we are now in a moment of a swing towards protocols towards decentralization, and we don't know how long that will last and how deeply we will be able to engage with it, and the work we're doing is what, what matters for that. Um, let's skip over that. Uh, the, the work in building things like Noster and other related protocols was something that a very small group of people were working on in obscurity until Elon Musk took over uh, Twitter. It didn't seem like anyone else was going to be able to adopt these things or pull them off. And so it felt like it was just going to be something we were stuck um, in a bit of a, you know, this is an interesting set of people hacking, but it's never going to go mainstream. And then, you know, we had Noster come up as one of these protocols that I was aware of because I was obsessed with decentralized social media protocols. And Bitcoiners were aware of if they were particularly interested in this, but no one else knew about it. <clears throat> Once the Twitter apocalypse happened, everyone said, where are we going to go? What are we going to search for? And it's really amazing that Noster took off in this time because it wasn't ready. You know, uh, Damas was not in the app store. Uh, the, the quality of the apps that were around in November um, just weren't, weren't fully flushed out. And so that uh, Nostra took off is, is really positive and says a lot about what we're building. So bring up this Cambrian explosion of alternatives. Uh, and you may know about Noster and a few of the others, but these are all the different decentralized social media protocols that are out there. There actually are more. Um, because I don't have a, it's not a full-time job to keep track of them all. Um, and uh, many of them have common characteristics and, and ways in which you might want to use some of them. But, uh, you know, the, the point is that, that we've consolidated around this one and we have a set of critical mass. Um, lastly, that, you know, Noster is the, after Mastodon, the actual decentralized social media protocol and platform that's getting the most adoption of where people are going for Twitter. And I say Blue Sky isn't because Blue Sky is all exists on a single server and it aspirationally wants to be a, um, 
decentralized protocol, but it isn't yet. Um, so we're, we're around. Uh, this, this is a report from uh, about a month ago. Um, and, and lastly, I don't think we should assume that we, we will win. You know, the Communist Party thought that they would have a slow march of workers' proletariats, and, and, you know, they would make Soviets all over the world, and, and Marxism was inevitable, and so therefore you didn't have to worry about it. And, and that wasn't true in any way whatsoever, and um, there's probably some really good reasons why it's not true. And so we shouldn't assume that Noster will somehow inevitably succeed. You know, we're, we're here in Japan where we had, you know, Betamax, which was better technology than VHS, but it didn't win. So the better technology doesn't win. Um, the better community values don't win. You know, what wins is what users choose. And so we need to think about how to make users want to choose us and want to build with us. Um, and right now, we are really, really good at one set of users, which are the Nostr developers. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the Nostr website, this is a website for programmers, by programmers. You're like, ooh, I'm going to join Nostr. And then it's like, and here's some JSON, not... <laughs> Here's some social media posts where I can connect with my friends, <laughs> um, which is like, like it's a beautiful site and it is useful. But this is a developer site, and you know, and Ben Ben Ark knows this, and like we need this site to show the best of all these different Nostra apps, explain the ecosystem, explain the vision, have like we have good documentary films that people have produced about Nostra and why we exist. Those should be on there. Like, we should walk through it, there, things like that. And we have a ton of apps. Like, we have a successful app ecosystem that, uh, year, you know, a few years ago when I was like, we should have a decentralized social platform, I, I couldn't even dream of this many apps. It's amazing, but we only have a smaller set of users. And so we are experimenting, but we're not there. And lastly, we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is uh, a financial transaction, and there's a lot of ways in which it is very useful. Um, but what we really have a lot of in Nostra are Bitcoiners. And uh, we have a whole world in which if you are a Bitcoiner, you join, you find other people you like, and you find other people you connect with. And there is nothing wrong with that. But you get lots and lots of Bitcoin memes. And lots and lots of Bitcoin memes. And when I go and show it to people who are not Bitcoiners, they're like, I couldn't care less about the central banking system. <laughs> and, and, and most people shouldn't need to care. Um, you know, this stuff, like this shouldn't matter to most people. We, like, we should be able to just like, you know, you should be able to use it. You should be able to do it. You should, like, it's fine that it exists, but most people shouldn't care. And, like, most people shouldn't care who this guy is, who, who didn't create Bitcoin. He just has the same name. Um, so, like, we need to move beyond that. We need to do it. And then if you look at what has grown faster and now is about twice as big, which is Blue Sky, you can see the map here is that Blue Sky has many more different communities. And they've done a better job of clustering it, even though it is not decentralized. It is not open, it is not collaborative in the way, and you don't have the same level of app ecosystems, but it has done a better job of letting people discover their communities. And I do believe that Blue Sky will, through the app protocol, become decentralized, and I believe that we will be able to interoperate with it. So, for me, the first rule about Noster is you don't talk about the Bitcoin. You, you, you have the lightning there, Lightning Networks, Bitcoin, wallets, it's there, it works. You can send people money, you can pay for it, everything else. But you don't, like, I think we need to find a way to promote what we're doing and promote what we're talking about without talking about it. And that's not to say that we remove it in any way. Just we need to talk about what we're doing that's not talking about Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is a tool, and it's created a culture around it, but we need to think of it as a tool. 
Um, and we needed to think about building a way space for many different communities. And one of the things that we need to realize is that we don't reflect the larger society. And so this is, uh, this comes from one of the mailing lists. I found a, a, an Oscar mailing list and everything else. But like, we have a uh, 78% of the people who are interested and active are identifiable as men. 11% are women. And then there's a percentage of people who, like, the systems can't identify gender on this, you know, they're using something ambiguous. And almost everybody is between 35 and 45. That is not a reflection of the larger world. And it isn't a reflection of who uses, who uses social media or who we want to be using social media. So we've got work to do. And we need to realize that there's different strokes for different folks. And that that's, that's okay. And we don't all like the same stuff. And if we're going to build a social media ecosystem that everybody uses, it needs to work like that. So, you know, one of the things that you won't notice or understand if you use the use Noster as one of the 85 or 90 percent of the users who are men is you won't see the difference in which the way your gender is is treated online, the way your race is treated online, the way in which we don't just because there's a name there we don't treat everyone the same and in particular women face tremendous amount of harassment and it's not having the ability to handle that that drives them off the platform. And so we need to realize that there is lots of garbage in humanity. There is a lot of shitty behavior. We can't make our social software fix everyone. But we have to realize that the shit we see and do online, we don't all see the same. And so the, you know, the garbage of the internet is what drove a lot of centralization. It's what justified pulling in control into Meta, into Facebook, into AOL back in the day, all of these things. And so we need to build resilient ways of preventing people from being subjected to the garbage. We need, we need to be able to resist it without falling in the trap of a centralization of control. And on Noster, these aren't pulled in from, from the Fediverse, we have people who are saying shitty things really horrible shitty things and I'm like I don't want to see it I don't want them replying to my messages I don't want anything and I don't need them to be off of the internet to be able to have separate spaces and be able to choose what happens you know what we need is we have freedom of speech we also need the freedom of mute freedom of ability to not hear what I'm doing and we need the ability to have freedom from harassment so that people can have their spaces where they can feel comfortable, where they can communicate, where they can enjoy and connect without facing, subjecting themselves to harassment. And so Noster is about choice and agency. It's about building relays and apps and systems that empower users to have choice. And so one of the things that we've been working on with Nost Social is how do we build in tools, both in the Noster spec and into our application, that, do, that, that can do this? Um, and how do we do it in a way that's empowering your user agency? Because we don't want to just ask a, an opaque, you know, semi-government, you know, corporate entity to make all of our trust and safety decisions. Because we, as humanity, speak 8,000 languages and exist in a couple hundred countries and have millions and millions of subcultures, all of which have different norms, and those norms are okay. And we need to be able to choose what norms make sense for our own communities. And so we, like, this is our public space, and we need to be able to make that choice. And choosing what's okay for your community is not censoring it. It's setting norms for your community because you can have other communities with these apps, on these relays, that post other content. Um, so we need to build out a system of decentralized moderation, and we need to build out a system where we can replace these centralized services that we had in trust and safety teams at Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and Snapchat with decentralized ones where we do it ourselves. One of the ways we do it is things like the TrustNet algorithm, which says, 
I'm going to pay more attention to the friends of friends. And their content reports are going to matter more. Their blocks are going to matter more than some random other person. And we use our, our association. Because that's the same way we would do if we meet someone new and they start acting a little weird. We're like, hey, is, is, is Bob okay? And they're like, no, no. Bob's really sketchy. Don't invite him over to your house. He'll steal stuff. Like, that's, that's what we do in human situations. So we need to be able to do it online. So one of the things that we worked on is the spec around reporting content. Initially, Apple just said you have to report content. And uh, Domus added that. Some of the other apps that are in the app stores added that. But it doesn't give you enough things because sometimes you're OK with stuff, and sometimes you're not. If you live in Iceland, you are A-OK with nudity. Like, sex on your social media is great, but no violence. And in other places, they're like, violence is OK, but no nudity. And each individual needs to set that. So we have a system by which you can do classifications. And there's NIPs for this now. The other is that setting up content warnings. So that if people have reported content or set up warnings, you can see it. And this is in the NOS social app that I work on. Um, and letting users set their own content warnings. Inside Mastodon, you can set a content warning, but there's no structure around it. It's just like warnings. So people do content warnings like, Content warning, bored at work. And content warning, talking about my food. Uh, that's not useful for filtering. So we have the same sets of controlled vocabulary around this stuff. So you could say, you know, just so you know, I'm going to talk about, you know, use profanity. Or there's going to be mentions of violence. Um, and then users can see it. And when you see content warnings, you can make decisions. Do I want to see the content warning? Do I want to remove the content warning? The apps need to support this. We need to be able to give people who are empowered. Um, and then we need to get them a set of tools. This part uh, isn't actually rolled out into production yet. But like saying, I want to subscribe to someone else's mute list. I want to say that these are the content I want to see. These are the content I don't want to see. Uh, put content warnings on these. Don't show this other one at all. Block this content. This, this is about centering the power of what you see and what your social space is in, in users. One of the things that we're, we've launched, uh, we're announcing here, is Cleanster. It is a tool that scours the, the Noster posts for reported, reported content, checks that reported content against OpenAI's moderation tool, and then re-tags it if OpenAI says, yep, this is, this is offensive content. You don't have to use this, but if you want to, you can add the relay in there. You can follow the reportinator bot, and it will give you just a feed of tags and reports on other people's content so that you can choose to say, oh, you know, I just don't want to accidentally come across all this stuff. Uh, it's open source. We want people to go run their own. Um, you know, we're, we're also saying, you know, how do we bring people into this? We bring people in by saying that not everyone here is here on, on Noster. And, and one of the early ways that Mastodon grew was by cross-posting to Twitter. So we have a, a bot that cross-posts your Noster content back to Twitter. For those folks, uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter's API has gotten very unstable. Uh, so it is not working very well. And we're trying to figure out why, um, even when we're paying them. Uh, another is uh, disappearing notes. I don't know if a lot of people know in the Noster spec and everything else that you can set an expiration timestamp on content as you post it. So in Nos Social, if you go in, you can say, I want this post to exist for an hour. And then after that, the relays will drop it. And uh, most relays support the NIPs for dropping this content. And if you set an expiration thing, it won't push it to relays that don't drop content. Um, and you can set it for a year. <clears throat> which is great, because like mostly what really old tweets do is get you in trouble. Uh, another is deleting notes. Uh, delete isn't absolute. You can't get it off everyone's machines. You can't make sure that someone didn't screenshot and everything else. But you can indicate that you didn't want it to be there. And you can ask people not to share it. And so that, I think does most of the social work. And so like, I wish Damas 
didn't say there wasn't delete. I wish there was a delete button with a warning like this, which is like, you know, or even more. It says like, we can't be sure it's gone. Relays might keep it. People might keep serving it. Um, but I think that we scare people away when we say there's no delete because there's also no delete at Twitter. There's no delete at Facebook or Instagram. They always keep a copy of everything. They just stop showing it, but they'll certainly hand it over to the police. Um, another thing we've added is stories. Uh, uh, so you can show expiring content. This is sort of like Instagram stories. You can see people's content, not in the endless feed, but for a specific set of users. Um, I wonder if it's going to play. Oh, yeah. So here, there's a little video of, of the stories. So you can, uh, you, know, you can navigate through and see, see Nostra content in a different way. Um, and, uh, you know, see videos and photos, you know, like Instagram stories. Um, we did some small stuff to try and, try and visually improve it, thread displays of the context of what you're looking at. Um, another thing we, we've, we've built and released since the uh, Nostrica conference is a notification service. So this is a cloud service you can run um, to, and we run it for ourselves, that, that lets you do push notifications. So you, you do a Nostra event to this relay that says, this is, you know, this is my APNS, the key that Apple generates, and this is the kind of stuff that I want push notifications for. And then it runs as a bot. It pulls down content from relays and then sends you a push notification to that. I would love other apps to use this software too um, because I think if we're talking about engagement, having access to push notifications is an important feature. Um, Another thing we're doing, which is a little bit controversial in a community that doesn't like KYC, is adding a service that lets you attach verified credentials. So if you want to verify a phone number, verify an ID or everything else, and publish verified credentials, you can. You do not have to. Um, but there are things that it enables. Um, another thing that we, we've built and launched is a thing called Dumpling. Dumpling is a paid content server. Um, right now, you can pay for content using Fiat and uh, Lightning, but we also want you to be able to pay for content using Apple Pay, where if you're on an iOS device and you have to pay for content, you have to give Apple their 30% cut. You might as well use Apple Pay. Um, the final person will be paid in Lightning. Um, but the ability to do paid content, is, I think, is important. And I think we shouldn't walk away from the paid content thing just because Apple wants to take their pound of flesh. Um, we should fight against Apple taking the pound of flesh, but uh, we shouldn't walk away from the idea that there's a business model here that isn't based on advertising. And so uh, we've built and launched this thing called Dumpling uh, that'll let do it. There's other ones out there. Um, I think there needs to be a bunch of them. Another one is how do we get groups of communities and users who aren't Bitcoiners, and that's doing through partnerships. So we're working on a partnership with Causes. Some of the Causes people are here. I believe they'll be speaking later, where we take their, their organizing tool. Ironically enough, Causes started out as a Facebook for good project that spun out of Facebook. Uh, and so you can do a bunch of, of engagements. And you can, you know, through Causes, you can set up your own relays. Each different cause or organization, like Planned Parenthood, will have own relay for publishing their content. There's a management interface for it. Um, and we're going to use it for fundraising, fundraising for stuff. And so, again, these fundraising things, if you're on a platform where, you know, you can accept Lightning directly, you do it. If you're not on a platform that, you use, you use the platform's rules and while we work to build an alternative. We're also looking at events uh, so that you can organize that. Nostra has an event spec but most of the social clients don't display it. And so, you know, this is about attaching. So you can have an event, you can attach a fundraiser to it, um, and it's about engagement. Um, so what do I, I have actually no idea what time, how long I'm taking, but what about Nostra's future? And where do I think we need to be going having gotten through what, what we've been working on for the last six months? One is contact discovery. If we're going to find people who aren't the existing people on these systems, we need contact discovery. We can do privacy-preserving, decentralized contact discovery with private set intersection. And we should be doing it. 
we can build a system by which you provide apps access to your address book and find phone numbers to things that match them. Uh, the algorithms exist. We need to build it. We need to build services and the sets of libraries like NDK that make it really easy so each individual app developer doesn't need to do that, just like we don't need to do our own encryption. Relay discovery. Relays can have specific relays. We have relays that are just for, you know, content reports. How do you discover them? What do they look like? How do you see that content? What do these different communities relays look like? We need to make that easier and make it easier to find them. Relay management. You know, what's the API for managing it? Adding people, removing people, setting word filters, checking the content reports on a relay. Uh, we don't have all that figured out and, and we need it. Um, you know, we need better community support. We've got, you know, Satellite Earth and we've got uh, Amethyst who have specific communities. Those are great. We need them in some more of the apps so that we can collaborate. And, you know, we have communities on here that are working on stuff, but they're not huge because they're only in some of the apps and people don't know how to discover them. And, uh, you know, Will and other folks were talking earlier. It's like, okay, you know, Pablo had this thing of like, all apps don't have to implement all things. And that's totally true. Like, we shouldn't all be trying to implement all things. We should be able to say, hey, the people you're following are participating in these communities. Do you want to go open an app where you can see the community discussion? You know, here's, a, here's the causes, causes relay. It has a specific set of content. It's only like calls to action and, and political messages. Um, another thing we need is encrypted private groups. And we need them to be scalable. You know, we have end-to-end -end encryption for specific DMs, but we expose the metadata, which is not good. Um, but we should be able to have, you know, 500 people or 1,000 people be able to have private groups. And because centralized systems don't need encryption and they just put it on a server, they can do private groups really easily. And um, users don't care about the decentralization stuff. And so we need it to be encrypted. It's a harder problem, but we need to take it on. Um, and we need to make it easy for non-technical users. You know, in the Not Social app, it says, what's your NIPO 5? That's a terrible piece of UI, and because no one knows what that means. And so we need it so that people don't have to understand all this stuff. Um, and again, Noster.com should be for non-technical users, and developer.noster.com should be for us. You know, and we've got some things that are nice, things that are helpful. You know, NJump, it's a new service. It's really great. You can link to it and then link on to a whole bunch of Nostra apps. Probably need some sort of some UX experience on it, but it is super useful, and I'm really glad it's there. Um, another thing we need to do looking forward is we need to refactor the NIPs. We've got stuff that is in the NIPs that the apps don't implement. We've got, you know, the issue with, like, mute lists. Amethyst and Damas use one list event, you know, kind for their mute list. The spec says a different one. I don't care which we use. We should just come to an agreement. Um, but, like, it's weird that some of the apps use different mute list event IDs than others. You know, and, and we need engagement. When you join with a new account on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok, they do a lot to show your content to other people. They do a tremendous amount to make sure that people like your stuff and you feel seen. And if you join Noster, we're like a little worried about bots and everything else. And so users don't see seen. And so we lose people very quickly here. Last, you know, we need custodial Noster, which is I just use OAuth, username and password, to log into services, and then I can access these web apps. Um, shouldn't be the only way. You should own your keys. You should be able to control them. But one of the reasons that, like, Blue Sky took off is because they hide the fact that the keys are sitting on the server. And so we need the ability to do that. And, and Nostra Connect is part of that. Um, there are some NIPs that's, that are working on that, but we don't have it rolled out. And the, the web apps don't support it. You know, Nostra Connect. We need, you know, Nostra needs its Coinbase and Binance. We need, we need these, you know, things where you don't have to understand what it is. You don't have to have a hardware wallet. You don't have to, uh, you know, you know, it's, 
because of the Bitcoin community's history of already knowing how keys and wallets work, we forget how complicated and hard these things are. Um, and we need user experience research that isn't visual design. We need testing. We need people to go out, show up the apps, walk through them, develop personas, see what was going on, understand where they're lost, and fix it. And, you know, it is a, we need, a, we need to do it many, 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 many times. And that's going to find all these rough edges. And so, you know, uh, we, we build the apps for ourselves and we find them that they're useful, but then we forget what doesn't work. We need to remember that algorithms aren't bad. They just need to be controlled by users and they need to be transparent. And if we ignore algorithms and are just like reverse chronological forever, then we're, 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 we're not going to win because the people with algorithms are going to tune it to be more engaging. And so it's about user agency. It's about being able to see why the algorithm is making that decision, be able to choose which algorithms, be able to plug them in. Uh, Primal does a really good job of this and some of the other apps do. Um, and we need to make it easy to reuse the algorithms from one app to the other so we're not like all duplicating each other's work. And we need to deal with CSAM, especially with NIP96 and the ability to upload uh, media to relays. Uh, the laws don't care how the child pornography got on your computers. Um, and we need to protect our users and figure out a way to remove it and fix it. And I think we can. I think that it's, it's, you know, someone can recompile the software and run it with this stuff disabled. That is fine. But most users need the soft, they, they expect that stuff to happen. And so uh, we need the ability to handle it. Um, we need to have adversarial interoperability. This we actually have which is like I can go take my NSEC and put in another app and they collaborate. No one knows whether or not they're using NOS or Domus or Primal or Coracle or Snort. Um, but we also can link between different things. Like you can see a Noster profile on Blue Sky very uh, indirectly where it's like, Noster to Monster to Activity Pub to Bridge Fetty to App Portal, and we need to we need to bridge these things together, and we need to realize that all these protocols, all these open protocols, are are part of the same team, where you don't need permission to start building stuff, you don't need permission to start using it, where it's self signed identities, um, and so I I'm super excited about that. And I think that, you know, Noster is a much better platform than most of the other ones for building the variety of apps. But we don't have the user base that some of the other folks do. And so um, we need to work well with them, and we can't. Sort of lastly uh, is, uh, is a little bit of an announcement um, that, you know, Nost Social is an app. We had a company called Verse Communication, but we've also gotten a, a grant um, from Jack's Start Small and launched something we called Team Open Tech uh, in partnership with Open Collective, which a bunch of you probably know uh, is a way in which a bunch of open source projects are funded. Uh, some of that is to get them to be decentralized, to support, you know, hopefully we don't have it all signed off, but, but Lightning and everything else, and crowdfunding on Noster, get their stuff more directly integrated with Noster, and... Um, build a, a better for future together. And so uh, I guess with that, I think that's my last slide. Yep. So uh, I want to just say thank you. And, and hopefully, uh, maybe some people have some questions. I hope it was useful. And I'm super excited about what we build in the future. Thank you, Rebel. Yep. Oh. Um, earlier, you dropped a little tidbit about the idea of um, cloud-based uh, identity management and tracking. I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, logging it, we like 
at the moment, you log into Nostra Web Apps by installing a browser plugin that then stores the keys. And a few of them support NSEC Bunker or NIP46, which is like Nostr Connect, not Wallet Connect, just has a very similar name. And I think that most users have been trained to say, you know, my account exists on a server, there is a username, there is a password, there's an email address, or maybe I log in with my phone number, and I don't have to worry about losing those keys. And so I think we need the web apps in the Nostra ecosystem to support that, and the mobile apps too, so that if I'm in Domus or Amethyst or Nos Social and I click on a link for a specific kind of Nostra content, uh, like Streamster or something like that, it can load it, and it can still know who I am. And I think that figuring out how to make that integration seamless between all these different apps, you know, and there's the Nostra browser stuff, there's definitely people experimenting with it. I think that's one of the things that's gonna unlock massive growth. And so I think we need to not just figure out the tech, but also the UX around it and how we explain it to people. And um, I'm excited because I think we can do it, but uh, right now we just sort of have bits and pieces and promises. Any other All right, questions? right here. Yep. Um, yeah, it seems like there's a lot of needs to push this forward, and obviously with like Bitcoin, there's a monetary incentive of people, you know, protecting their purchasing power, or wanting to see this thing grow, or in the normal companies, you know, they're trying to raise money, they're financed, they can hire talent. So how do we overcome the hurdles of pushing people to advance these products, you know, in non-traditional means? Maybe there's fundraising, things like that, but how else can we improve these things? So I think, so, you know, one of the things that I felt when I observed early Twitter or early Web 2.0 was there were many, many experiments. There were many people who were able to try things and it was really fun. And then the advertising model took over and it was consolidated and you couldn't build your own thing. And so I think having a lot of playful ways in which people can try and use these things is a way to have it grow. You know, I uh, was talking this morning with some folks and, and saying that every time they tried to share a, an Instagram meme that had butt, like it was a butt joke, Instagram would be like, no butts, because that might be about sex. And it, and it wasn't even explicitly sexual. And then what's wrong with explicitly sexual content? And so, you know, like maybe the answer is you make a really good way for people to share collections of butt memes that are like censored from Instagram. And, you know, so I think that, I think we need to find ways in which people are being pushed off existing platforms. And creators do not like being vulnerable. They, they're they're going to go for where they can build an audience. But if they can build an audience and not have their accounts taken away, not have their followers taken away, they will do it. And so... I think, I think we need to just sort of try and explore a bunch of different ways of doing it and a bunch of different systems for collaborating and new ways of, of displaying this information and make the promise of the open social ecosystem work where we can have lots of different apps that interact. And then every time you join and try a new app, you're like, oh, my friends are already here. Like... I've never logged in to Streamster, but now I know what my friends are listening to, and I can start listening to them without having to reconstruct your followers every single time. And so I think we need to make the tech easy, we need to make it playful, we need to make it fun, and we need to make it so that people find their people. And that's going to grow slowly. Yeah. To your left. Yeah. Um, Thanks for the, I'm over here to your left. Oh yeah. Uh, really great summary for some, from someone that's like basically a norm, I mean, I'm a tech capable, but really new to it. Um, do you see any risk in kind of the, the movements of the things that you've outlined 
uh, to get it more approachable for normal users, do you see any risk of it spawning kind of like the purity test, sort of like libertarian purity or whatever, where you know it could foster like a a toxic nostrich, you know, where there's, you know, there's today where it's fully uncensored, it's fully decentralized, it's fully unlimited, but in order to draw, is there a balance between driving adoption versus being true to kind of the, you know, the current state? Is there, do you see risk for that? And if so, what's the preventative measure? I mean, to, to me, the biggest risk would be that people are comfortable in, and the app developers are comfortable with their, their experience, and so, you know, don't adopt the model. And, and this isn't a model which says we, we impose censorship from the outside. This isn't a model that says we impose moderation on the outside. This is a model in which we build software that empowers users to, to make those decisions and has sensible defaults. But I could see us, you know, not spreading beyond the Bitcoiners. Because, you know, the folks here in the room are happy with what is there and they feel comfortable with it. And so uh, that's my worry is how to convince the, the Noster developer community that our experience doesn't reflect the experience of normal users. Thank you. Hey, this is Lottie again. Hi. Um, yeah, I just want to say I'm really, really happy that you exist and this app exists and this talk happened because this is the main thing that I had an issue with when I first joined NASA. Like, I'm a big fan of emerging technology, especially when it comes to social, and I think decentralized social is the future, but I was just like, because I'm from the music industry, so I was like, how do I get, like, my friends on here because this is such a great way to build an audience and monetize directly and all these great things, but... And this is an issue in Web3 as well. Like the tech is always at the forefront and not culture. And I think that the things that you care about are the things that the average person cares about. And that's how mass adoption happens, right? Like literally, what do people want? And how do you give it to them in a way that's adjustable, but also that's good for them? My question for you, number one, is are you looking for like ambassadors or something? Because I'm telling you right now, I will post about this every day on Twitter so and Instagram. I, I think... I think we do, like we as a Noster community need ambassadors. Like we have OpenSats and we've been doing some funding of, of, of developers in the space, but we also need to figure out what the right model is to support sort of community organizers who are like, hey, this, you know, this way in which we're sharing stuff on Instagram is giving it all to Mark Zuckerberg and we shouldn't like that. Or we're, we're organizing on TikTok and, you know, it's great, but they hand everything to the Chinese government and that's pretty creepy. Um, so, uh, and realize that the, like, the social aspect matters. And so we need a way to support almost like a street team of, exactly. of ambassadors, of people who engage and bring their community in and, and communicate back to the developer community, building Noster, where the problems are and what needs to get built. Like, so there's a, a book a friend of mine wrote called Design Justice. Mm. And she wrote this book about how do you design with communities? And how do you do co-design with communities? And so I think that we both need to work with folks and say that uh, not just like do this labor for free, but like can we set aside some of the resources that we have here and it's not going to be much money, but to like, maybe it's pay for pizzas or something else or, you know, to get people to show up stuff or, or, or stickers or help people get online. But I think that there's something there and we should try and figure out how to use some of our resources for it to, to get different communities on board and support the people who do that work. And second part of my question is, You've already mentioned some major competitors like Threads, Mastodon, Blue Sky, et cetera. In what ways do you see Noster being the leader in, in terms of all of those types of decentralized social? And how would you like any of us in this room to help kind of carry that message forward so that way people don't see anything else as a more obvious platform or protocol to be a part of? So I, I see Noster as the the strong leader in two different ways. One, it is a much, much more interesting environment to build applications. Like, 
we can build much more interesting applications. It's like blue sky is super tech, like super interesting, and then some of its tech is better, but you can really only build a Twitter-like app on blue sky. And you know, Matrix, super interesting protocol. You can really only build like a direct messaging and group chat application on top of Matrix. Um, and so Noster lets us build many, many kinds of applications. And so you know, that's why I do stuff on Noster and not, not ActivityPub and the Fediverse, because I don't get any leverage effect of it. You know, I could build NoSocial on the Fediverse, but I don't like then someone couldn't build up on top of what I have. And that's the way open source works. The other way in which Noster is, is different and powerful is that Noster's use of connection to integration with Lightning means that easy, fast micro payments are possible, which means we have business models that aren't advertising or high value subscription content. You know, OnlyFans or Substack can do subscription content because you pay lots of dollars per month per thing. And so those are the two places that Noster really succeeds. But we don't necessarily have more users. Uh, we aren't in as many communities. We don't necessarily have the UX is better. Uh, but uh, we both can do more interesting applications. And, you know, the financial model wasn't baked in to... Twitter and Instagram and, and Facebook and MySpace and all those others, when they were starting, they didn't have any other model but advertising. And that that is fundamentally different. And I don't see the Fediverse or Blue Sky or everyone else being willing to adopt lightning payments or other equivalent micropayments. And so um, that's huge. Could you uh, talk a little bit more about how you might see how Twitter's loss might be Noster's gain, or how those can be basically two sides of the same coin? Yeah, absolutely. So for the early years of Twitter, the first four to five years of Twitter, you didn't need uh, to register your app. You just used the user, get the user put in their username and password, and there was no way to distinguish between a, an app using Twitter and a person using Twitter. And that was really powerful because, you know, TweetDeck didn't need to ask Twitter's permission. But there's some security problems with TweetDeck and Twitterific and all these other apps having your username and password. So Twitter was right to switch to OAuth. Um, and over time, that creativity disappeared, and we got only one kind of Twitter. And then, as long as that was the dominant platform, as interesting as Noster is, in terms of being able to build many kinds of applications, we weren't going to convince people to leave. And so now, you know, we have this, you know, what happens if someone takes over Twitter and, and messes with it and, and breaks it in various ways? Then people look for an alternative. And so initially, they're just looking for an alternative for what Twitter does today. And so... You know, that's part of why Blue Sky is taking off. And, and, and it's not wrong for us to make Domus and Amethyst and, and Nos and all these others, you know, work Twitter-like because that's what users understand. Then they can see that they can use it for other things. And so I think that uh, it's, it's not just, it's not an opportunity to replace Twitter. It's an opportunity to replace the, the Twitter that was, or the original promise of Web 2.0, which is a much more open platform for building things. And that's super exciting. Other questions? All right, thank you, Rabble. Yeah, thanks so much.